authentic Islamic manners where we're discussing the things where the Muslims which the Muslim needs every day and last topic we discussed was about uh, Adabul Masajid or Adabul Masjid the manners of the Masjid and it is very sad one of the brothers he pointed out after we prayed Isha yesterday we said one of the one of the uh, manners of the Masjid after you pray you don't disturb people by talking after you pray, if you don't want to do dhikr, you leave. You leave. But he said, subhanallah, Sheikh, you just talked about it five minutes before Isha. We prayed Isha and they did the same thing. And they did the same thing. Some people, you see them. Immediately give salam, he's up. Where is he going? He has nowhere to go. He goes there to the back and starts to disturb people. He starts to disturb people. Uh, you're getting sins. You're getting sins. Anyway, so today, insha'Allah, is Adabu As-Salam. Adabu As-Salam. The manners of Salam, giving Salam, or greetings. We have to know the greeting of the Muslims, Jazakallah khairan. The greeting of Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He praised it. It's not a normal thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says what? Tahiyyatan? Huh? Tahiyyatan? No. Tahiyyatun Mubarakatun Ahsant. Surah Nur, right? Tahiyyatun Mubaraka. It's a greeting which is full of blessings. A greeting full of blessings. It comes where? It comes from where? Tahiyyatun Mubarakatun. Min indillah. This is from Allah. Allah taught us this. It's not a custom. That is ibadah itself. A greeting which is blessed from Allah. It's not something small. Huh? And what is the meaning of salam? Before we, we, we mention that, we mention all of us should know that as salam is one of the names of Allah. As salam is one of the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions about Himself in Surah 2. Al Hashr that he is as salamu al mu'minu al muhaiminu al aziz al jabbar al mutakabbir. As salam is one of his beautiful names. What does as salam mean when you say Allah is as salam? As salam uh, mean asma illahi ta'ala. What is the meaning of it? Listen to this. Huwa alladhi he is the one. Tuslim thatahu anil aib. That he is. O salimat thatahu anil aib. He himself, his essence, he is free from any deficiencies. Wasifatuhu anil naqs. His attributes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his descriptions, they are free from any imperfections. وَأَفْعَالُهُ عَنِ الشَّرِّ His actions, the one he does, they are free from any evil. Allah does not do any evil. That is a salam, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that he is the source of all peace. A salama, peace, security, safety. He is the source of all of that. That is why, you know the Sahaba when they used to pray fast, when you say the tahiyya, you say tahiyya, you say what? A tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawat. They used to say before that, As-salamu ala Allah. As-salamu ala Allah. May the salam, peace, be on Allah. And the Prophet said, no. Allah is as-salam. Allah is as-salam. You don't ask for salam for him because he is the source of as-salam. When the Muslim says to another Muslim, As-salamu alaykum, it means, may Allah protect you and keep you safe. Let me ask you a very sincere question. When was the last time somebody made dua for you like that? He said, may Allah protect you and keep you safe. When? When was the last time somebody made that dua for you? Nobody can remember. 
Wouldn't you love for people to make dua for you like that? Huh? Right? When, when people give you salam and you give people salam, that's what you're saying. May Allah keep you safe and protect you. Assalamu alaikum. You understand? It's a dua you make for each other. That is number two. Number three, before we go into the actual manners, who can tell me when did the salam start? The first salam. Bismillah. When Adam alayhi salam was created. You sure? Uh, already shaking you now. When I say you're sure, you're shaking. Yes? Adam again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam with his own hands. وَتُولُهُ سِتُّونَ ذِرَاعًا His height, Adam, was 60 ذِرَاعًا This is the ذِرَاعًا from your finger uh, um, tip to your elbow. That's a ذِرَاعًا So it's like what? Um, huh? Two feet? Okay, multiply by 60. 120 feet. That's the height of Adam alayhi salam. And nobody is more beautiful or was more beautiful and handsome than Adam. And that is his height. And width, who knows the width? What is the width? 20. So that's what? 40 feet wide. That's his shoulders width. Falamma khalaqahu, once Allah created him, what happened? After blowing the soul, what happened then? He sneezed after that. No. وَعَلَّمَ الْآدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا Allah taught Adam everything. That's the one of the first things which happened. He was taught everything. Allah gave him the knowledge of everything. This is a tree. These are apples. This is grapes. These are mangoes, dates, river, water, fire. Allah taught him everything to prove to the angels. And then Allah brought him and said to the angel and told Adam what? Huh? Oh Adam, tell them the angels all of these things. And he told them everything and they were amazed. He was just created a few moments ago and he knows everything already. Because Allah taught him. You understand? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after all of this happened, Allah said to Adam, Idhab ila tilka nafar min al-malaika. Go to that group of those angels. Fasallim alayhim and give them salam. Wonder and look. Mother, you give book, how they're going to respond to you. So Adam went and said, Assalamu alaikum. Where did he know this? Allah taught him. That's why we said, Allah says in Surah Nur, this is a beautiful, blessed greeting which comes from Allah. He said, Go give them salam. Adam went and he gave them salam. Assalamu alaikum. And they replied, said, Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. They increase the rahmatullah. And that is, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that is your tahiyya, your greeting, and the tahiyya of your children, Adam. And so all of the children of Adam who are going to enter Jannah, they will have the same height as their father and the beauty of their father. Situ nadira in Jannah. In Jannah it's not your normal human beings, it's you, but it's you in another Huh? Another form, upgraded. Upgraded. Bismillah. So this is a beautiful blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a dua you make to each other. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, He orders us in the, in the Quran. When someone gives you the tahiyya, the greeting, salam, what do you do? 
You have to respond with something better or at least what he gave you. So if he says, Assalamu alaikum, you say, Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Give him better or at least the same he gave you. It's a must to respond to the salam because your brother made dua to you, for you. So you make the dua for him or her. You understand? Assalam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, there's nothing which the Jews, the kuffar, they envy you, they envy you for most than what? The ta'ameen, you say ameen in salah and the salam. As salam to the point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he made it also the greeting of the people of Jannah. Tahiyyatuhum fiha salam. Their greeting inside of Jannah is salam. The people of Jannah, all they hear, salamun qawla min rabbin rahim. They will hear salam from Allah, subhanallah. Allah tells them salam also. You understand? Salam. It's not something small. The angels, they used it. Where did they use it? With which prophet? Ibrahim. What does the ayah say? Alayhi salam. Ah, if dakhalu alayhi faqalu salaman. Qala salamun. They gave him salam. Strangers. But once you give salam, people feel comfortable. When you're a stranger, but then you give salam, people know, alhamdulillah, salam is what? Peace. I come with peace. May Allah protect you. The angels. So it is something important in a Muslim's life. When we touched on this last week, from the manners of what? Walking. Was it the manners of walking? Yes, we touched on this. Anyway, today, inshallah, from the manners of salam, maybe we start mentioning them. Number one. That you give salam to every Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he directed us to this. Many of us today we cry, the ummah, the ummah. Hmm? You find those who cry, the ummah, we need to do this and that and that. If you don't do the basics, then we can't do anything more. Like we said, the basics. There's basic things Islam put which creates love between the Muslims and they can be united. Basic things. I'm going to repeat that. There's basic things in Islam which if we practice every day, they make us collectively strong, united. One of those things is joining our feet while praying and our shoulders, standing like brothers and sisters. One of the easiest things, very easy to do. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لا تختلف فتختلف قلوبك. Do not differ even in standing in prayer. And then your hearts will differ. Another of those things, listen to this hadith reported by Imam Muslim, he says, The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ لَا تَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ حَتَّى تُؤْمِنُوا He said, I swear by the one in whose, in whose hand is my soul. You will never enter Jannah until you are true believers. And you'll never become true believers until you love each other. They should I not tell you something. If you do it, you will love each other. He said, yes. So the Prophet said, what? Spread the salam between yourselves. You'll never enter Jannah until you do what? You love each other. You, you believe. And you'll never believe until what? You love each other. Should I not show you something which will make you love each other? Give salam. Spread salam. Simple things. 
لكن today very strange very sad very sad as it will come uh, the second one we should not just give salam selectively selectively we mentioned this also last week a man who came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said ay rasulullah ya rasulullah ayul islam khair which part of islam is the best قال, so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said what tut'imu at-ta'am that you give people food wa taqra'u as-salam ala man 'arafta man lam ta'rif and you give salam to those you know and those you don't know that is islam that is islam Number three. Al-iltizamu bisiyah al-warida an al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To use the words which came and were taught from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because this is ibadah like we just discussed. And it comes from Allah. So we should use it and apply it the, came, the way it came. Not to make our own um, versions. Hadith which is reported by Tirmidhi. عن إمران بن حسين رضي الله عنه أن رجلا جاء إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال A man came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he said السلام عليكم فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم عشر تن ثم جاء آخر and then another one came فقال and he said السلام عليكم ورحمة الله فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عشرون تني ثم جاء آخر and then another one came and said السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ثلاثون ثاتي so you can say السلام عليكم you can say السلام عليكم ورحمة الله you can say السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته all of them are fine but that one is 10 rewards, this one is 30 rewards. Number four, you should not say alayka salam instead of assalamu alayka. You don't say alayka salam, may salam be on you, no. Also reported by Tibr at Tirmidhi from Jabir ibn Sulaym. He said, Ataytu al-Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Faqultu and I said, alayka salam. Faqala. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا تقول عليك السلام. Don't say عليك السلام. ولكن قل السلام عليك. Say السلام عليك. You understand? You don't say عليك السلام. Number five. Is it number five? Yes. أن يلقي السلام عند القدوم وعند القيام من المجلس. That you greet the people on meeting them and when leaving them. The salam is for you meet and when you leave. Rawat Tirmidhi wa Hassanahu an Abi Hurairata radiyallahu anhu anna Rasulallahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal Ithan taha ahadukum ila majlisin When one of you goes to a sitting Fal yusallim Let him give salam Fa in bada lahu an yajlisa fal yajlis If he wants to sit let him sit ثُمَّ إِذَا قَامَ فَلْيُسَلِّمْ And then when he's leaving, let him give salam also. فَلَيْسَتِ الْأُولَى فَلَيْسَتِ الْأُولَى بِحَقِّ مِنَ الْآخِرَةِ Because the first one doesn't have more right than the last one. All of them, all of them are equal. Number six. أَنْ يَحْرِسَ كُلَّ مُسْلِمٍ أَنْ يَكُونَ هُوَ الْبَادِئُ بِالسَّلَامِ Every Muslim should be passionate and should have zeal. That he be the first one to give salam. Some people, they act like the boss. You know, they never give salam. You have to give them salam. They think it's like something else. They don't know they're losing out. They don't know they're losing out. Huh? Rawa Abu Dawood is reported by Abu Dawood with an authentic hadith. And Abi Umama. رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said 
ان اولى الناس بالله من بداهم بالسلام the one who's the closest to allah is the one who gives salam first meaning what atibi he said ay aqrabu an-nas min al-mutalaqin min al-mutalaqiyin ila rahmati allah the one who is who's closest to allah's mercy is the one who gives salam first and this is what is reported from al-hasan ibn ali radiyallahu anhuma that he would give people salam first and some of them will say why do you give us salam first we should give you salam you are the grandson of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you'd say the one who gives salam first is the better one number 7 an yulqiya al muslimu as salama ala akhihi idha hala bainahuma shay to show how important this salam is plus it's easy rewards you're collecting for yourself when something comes between between you and, and your brother a barrier uh, even if it's a few moments away from each other when you see him again give him salam again you understand maybe we were here together and then you left you went this way out of the masjid the musalla and i went this way and we met outside we should give each other salam روى ابو داود بسند الحسن عن ابي هريره رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اذا لقي احدكم اخاه فليسلم عليه ونون اوف يو ميتس هيز براذر ليت هيم جيف هيم سلام فان حالت بينهما شجره او جدار او حجر ثم لقيه فليسلم عليه ايضا اند ذن اف ذا سيبريتد اند وور سيبريتد باي وات باي ا تري ها اور ا وول اور ا ستون let him give give him salam again let him give him salam again number 8 idha lam yasma'u as-salama a'adahu thalathan hatta yasma'u aw hatta yasma'u if they don't hear your salam you give them your salam they didn't hear repeat it three times repeat it three times and this from the action of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Anas bin Malik he says uh, reporting the manners of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam annahu kana idha takallama bi kalimatin a'adaha thalathan hatta tufham when he used to speak a word he would speak three times so that people understand clearly ah uh, wa idha ata ala qaumin fa sallama alayhim sallama alayhim thalath and when he comes to a people and gives them salam he would do it three times so if they don't hear they hear the second time or the third time Number 9 An yusallima al-muslimu ala man fi baytihi fa in lam yajid sallama ala nafsihi When you enter your house when you go home from anywhere you give salam you give salam How do you enter your house You enter your house with your right leg and you say what bismillah you enter your house with your right leg and you say bismillah so that all the devils the shayateen which were chasing you from shepherd and keel and wherever you came from they will stay behind your door they don't enter because when you go outside the shaytan attack you the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says idha dakhala ar-rajul baytahu fa qala bismillah وقال بسم الله قبل ان ياكل قال الشيطان او قال الشياطين لا مبيت لكم ولا طعام when you say bismillah while entering your house and then you say bismillah before eating the shayateen they say there's no food for you in this house and there's no place to stay على كل حال when you enter your house your home any home for that matter with your right leg and you say bismillah once you said bismillah the first thing you say is the salam You give salam for those in the house. Hmm? Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says, "Fa idha dakhaltum buyutan fasallimu ala ahliha. Fasallimu ala anfusikum tahiyyatan min 'indi Allah mubarakatan tayyibatan." Fa idha dakhaltum buyutan when you enter a house, any house, 
It is your own house. Someone invited you. فَسَلِّمُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ Give salam to yourselves. Give salam to those people inside. Give salam. تَحِيَّةً It is a greeting. مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ From Allah. مُبَارَكَةً It is blessed. طَيِّبَةً Nice and pure. When you enter the house. You enter the house and you give salam. What if there's nobody there? What if there's nobody? You still give salam. Even if there's no people inside, you still give salam. رواة الترمذي وقال حديث حسن صحيح غريب عن أنس بن مالك قال قال لي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنس he says the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said to me يا بني oh my child oh my oh young man إذا دخلت على أهلك فسلم يكون بركة عليك وعلى أهل بيتك when you enter into your house for your family when you go to your family فسلم عليهم give them salam why يكون بركة عليك وعلى أهل بيتك it will be a blessing for you and a blessing to your family remember when we started this book we said these are things we should have known but if we don't know then we're learning now alhamdulillah and that's the beauty of it right we're learning and it is essential for the children these are the manners of Islam. Our children have to be brought up with the manners of Islam. It is very sad that the Muslim child grows up or goes into the house and the first thing you hear is a um, humming of a music lullaby or whatever he was taught or she was taught at school. Or the first thing you hear from the child is, Hi, hi, Dad. Hi. <laughs> Subhanallah. Allah Musib. It's funny, but it's very sad also. Very sad. Then why we, we, we complain? Sheikh, there's no barakah in my family. There's always problems. These children, I think they have genes. They sh Maybe they have genes because they don't even know Salaamu Alaikum. What do you expect? What do you expect? If you don't even know the Salaam, if you don't know how to say Bismillah while entering the house, why you find it strange when you're in your family or you are attacked by shayateen and jinn? Why you find it strange? My point, this is not only for us. If you are responsible for people under you, whether it is your wife or your children, you have to go teach them. These are basic manners we have to do every day. How many times you enter your house? At least four or five times a day. If you go pray, you go to work, you go to the masjid, you go here and there. When you enter the house, Bismillah, Salaamu Alaikum, Baraka in the house, blessings. Naam? Number 10, is it 10 or 11? Number 10. إِذَا مَرَّ بِسِبْيَانْ أَلْقَ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّلَامِ When you pass by a group of Children who are playing, give them salam, even though you're older than them. We mentioned this, remember last week? From the manners of walking. Even if you're older, but you pass by a group of children who are playing, young men, give them salam. Huh? Anas bin Malik, anhu, he reported this. He said, huh? he passed by a group of children who are playing, and then he gave them salam, and then he said what? Kana nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The Prophet used to do this. He used to do this. Number 11. أن يسلم الراكب على الماشي والقليل على الكثير. The one who's riding should give the salam to the one who is walking. Uh, and the one who's walking should give salam to the one who is sitting. And those who are fewer should give salam to those who are more. So if you're two people, 
and you pass by a group of four people, the two people should give salam to the four. You understand? Now, if you are in your car riding and there's people are walking, you should give them salam. Or if you are walking and there's others who are sitting, you should give them salam. Now, ففي الصحيحين إن ذا تو صحيح البخاري أند مسلم عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يسلم الراكب على الماشي the one who's riding should give salam to the one who's walking والماشي على القاعد and the one who's walking should give salam to the one who's sitting والقليل على الكثير and those who are few should give salam to those who are more number twelve and you sallim as ala al-kabir. The young one should give salam to the older one. That is from the manners. And I think this is from the manners which are universal in any community, even those who are not Muslims. It's universal. The young one gives salam to the one who is older. Well, in the cultures or in the places where there's actually manners left, right, where there's still manners left, روى البخاري عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال يسلم الصغير على الكبير The young one should give salam to the older one. Now you have to teach your children that. If you don't teach them, where do you expect them to learn? Because it's quite disappointing that your child is 10, 11, 12, 13, whatever it is, and he or she meets an older person with you and he does not know how to give salam or does not know the importance and the manners of giving salam to the older people and respecting them. That is very, very disappointing. And us Muslims, us Muslims, it is bringing us down a lot. Because any ummah is valued by its, by its manners. The parents have to take that initiative and teach their children. Since they're young, when you meet an older person and say, Assalamu alaikum, it's very simple. You know, Alhamdulillah, our parents, and I'm speaking for my generation and those older, even though they didn't have the, the greatest knowledge of Islam, and they didn't know Sahih from Da'if, but these are some of the things which are in place, yani. There's no playing around that, right? You don't just say salam, you say salam and you take the hand and, share and, and kiss it of any older person. And if you don't do that, World War VI will break out. World War VI, you get it right there, right there you get it, not at home, right there you get it. Hmm? Why didn't you give salam? Very simple. Like in, I don't know what happened to the parents also. You know, you look at the child and you're expecting the salam. Okay, it's coming maybe. Maybe it's coming. Maybe it's coming. And it's not coming. Then you look at the father or the mother like, they don't know this also? Because it's shameful. These are from the manners of Islam. When Muslims meet each other, they give salam to each other. When the young ones meet the older ones, they give salam to the older ones. These are manners we have to do, we have to practice. That was number what? That was 12. That was 12, right? Now it's 13. الابتسامة عند إلقاء السلام ورده smiling come on smile brothers what's wrong with you سبحان الله some of you you know I don't want to say anything about that because you can turn it back and say also you sheikh you know you have some days you don't smile you know it's because maybe you are stressing me out <laughs> Uh, Imam Muslim rahimahullah he reports from Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu qala qala, nabi, qala lin nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
Abu Dhar, he says, the Prophet Sallallahu said to me, لا تحقرن من المعروف شيئا ولو أن تلقى أخاك بوجه طالق أو طلق Do not look down on any good deed. Do not look down on any good deed. You don't know what good deed is going to benefit you. Even if it is what he said, meeting your Muslim brother with a smile. You give salam with a smile. And for the sisters, you give salam to your fellow sister with a smile. Number 14. Something which comes with the salam is the musafaha. Musafaha, shaking of hands. And the hands we shake are the right hands. Not the left, the right hand. Rawal Bukhari, Bukhari reported from Qatada, who said, Qultu li Anasin, akanat li musafahatu fi ashabin nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, did the companions, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Salaf, did they used to shake their hands? He said, Naam, yes. You want to know the, who knows the, the excellence of it? Listen to this hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ma min muslimaini. There's no two Muslims. Yaltaqiyani who meet. And they give each other salam. Fayatasafahan and then they shake their hands. They shake their hands. Illa ghufira lahuma qabla an yaftariqa. Except that their sins are forgiven before they leave. Another hadith says their sins, as they shake off from their bodies. Just like the leaves shake off from the trees. Al Musafah, shaking the hand. But of course, like we said, this is only the, the male for the male and for the female for the female. The Muslim male is not supposed to shake the hand of someone who's not a mahram. You're not supposed to shake the hand of a woman who's not a mahram. The woman is not supposed to shake the hand of a man who's not a mahram. You understand? Naam. So that's, that's, does that mean you can shake the hand of your sister, the brother? and the, Yes. Can you shake the hand of your aunt? Yes. Can you shake the hand of your mother or your father? No. You don't shake the hand. You kiss the hand. You kiss the hand. I'm not joking. You kiss the hand of your mother and your father. You don't shake the hand. What is wrong with you? They're not on the same level as anybody. They're on a higher level. You kiss the hand. If they want you to kiss the feet, kiss the feet. You understand? Mm. Alaykum as -salam. That was number what? Number 15. It is okay also to join with the salam, the hand gesture. You understand? The hand gesture, like that. You know, the salam of the hand. Not just the hand though. The salam and the hand, that is okay. This reported by Tirmidhi in a hadith of Asma bin Tiazid. Uh, she used to report that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she passed by in the masjid and a group of women was sitting. فَأَلْوَى بِيَدِهِ بِالتَّسْلِيمُ وَأَشَارَ عَبْدُ الْحَمِيدُ بِيَدِهِ And so he pointed with his hand with salam like that and gave them salam. That is fine also. Number 16, look what the Shaykh brought. He said, تَعْلِيمُ آدَابُ السَّلَامُ لِمَنْ لَمْ يَعْرِفْهَا Part of the manners of salam is to teach these manners to those who don't know them. If you find someone who does not know the manners of salam, teach them. Imam at tirmidhi reported this from Kaladat ibn Hanbal. Anna Safwan ibn Umayya ba'athahu bilabanin huh? wa baghabis ila nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That he sent him, Safwan ibn Umayya sent Kalada to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with milk and dhagabis. Who knows what dhagabis is? al qitha You understand? When Nabiyu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam bi'a'la al-wadi and the Prophet was on the top part of the valley. Faqal, 
فَدَخَلْتُ عَلَيْهِ وَلَا مُسَلِّمْ So he entered and I did not give salam. وَلَمْ أَسْتَأْذِنْ I did not ask for permission. I just entered. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَى سَلَّمْ So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is saying to me, listen. He said to him, ارْجَعَ Go back. فَقُلْ سَأَسْسَلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ أَأَدْخُلْ Go back to the door and say, أَسْسَلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ أَأَدْخُلْ Can I enter? You understand? He entered. The Prophet وسلم, said, No, go back to the door and say, Assalamu alaikum. Can I enter? Can I come in? Manners. Manners. The parents are responsible for your children. The teachers are responsible for those under you. Basic manners. Right? Number 17. عدم ابتداء غير المسلم بالسلام You don't give salam to the non-Muslim You don't initiate salam to the non-Muslim روى مسلم عن عبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا تبدأوا اليهود ولا النصارى بالسلام Do not initiate the salam to the Yahud or the Nasara don't give them assalamu alaikum first. No. You understand? Number 18. What if they give you salam now? What if they give you salam? Rawa Muslim also reported by Imam Muslim and Anas. Anna ashab al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qalu al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Anas, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they came to the Prophet ﷺ and said to him, Inna ahl al-kitab yusallimuna alayna, fakayfa naruddu alayhim? The ahl al-kitab, Jews and Christians, they give us salam. So how do we respond? And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Qulu, Qulu, wa alaykum. Say to them, wa alaykum. That's how we respond. Number 19. If you pass by a group of people who are sitting, and they are Muslims and non-Muslims, a group of people who are sitting and there's what? Mixture. Muslim and non-Muslim. Then you give them salam. You give salam because it's for the Muslims. You understand? You don't hold back. You give salam. Urwa ibn, uh, Urwa ibn Zubair, he reported from Usama ibn Zayd, radiyallahu anhuma, akhbarahu anna al-Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he informed him that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, marra bi majlisin, wa fihi akhlatun min al-Muslimin wal-Yahuda, wal-Yahud, if a sallam alayhim. He passed by a group of people which was mixed, Muslims and Jews. So he gave them salam. He gave them salam. That was number 19. Number 20. There is no talking before salam. You don't speak to someone before salam. One of the hadith the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says, "Do not respond to the person who doesn't give you salam. The one who just comes and talks to you, don't talk back to him." Give salam first before you talk. Assalamu qabla al kalam. Number 21. Number 21. You don't abbreviate salam. You don't abbreviate salam in your texting or your emails. A A W W. It's not allowed. We just discussed that salam is, is dua. It is dua. It is ibadah. You don't abbreviate that. A A W W or W, I don't know what, when you reply. It's not allowed. You write Assalamu Alaikum. That was number what? 21. In your texting or your emails, you don't abbreviate. You give your salam properly. Number 22. Number 22. 
even if you're talking to someone on the phone, the same rule applies. You give salam. Salam is not just for face-to-face -face meeting. No, even on the phone, you call someone, you say salam alaikum before you talk. Number 23. Number 23. When you see people in ibadah, you don't disturb them. Especially if you're going to meet them after. When you see people in ibadah, you don't have to disturb them such that they interrupt their ibadah to return salam. Somebody is praying. You don't have to give him salam if he's praying. And this has become common here now. We just finished salam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Those brothers want to leave right away. People are doing dhikr. And they all, assalamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum. No, somebody is doing dhikr. Let him do dhikr. Let him do dhikr. That was number what? 23. I think we're done. You have any questions about the salam? Yes. <laughs> Can you give salam to the Shia? If they're Muslim, Huh? We are talking about salam here today. We're not talking about Shia. If you consider them Muslims, give them salam. If they don't consider them Muslims, don't give them salam. As for the question, are they Muslims or not? That's another question now. Okay, that's another question. A Muslim who does not pray, he is known not to pray. Why does he not pray? Is it because he's just lazy? He knows he's doing a sin or is it just he doesn't care? You give him salam. You give him salam. Yes, Akhi. It's a follow up or another question. If it's another one, then let others first ask. Yes. Now the, the issue of salam here to the non-Muslim, uh, there's issues behind it. Yani masail. Does saying hi, good morning, howdy. <laughs> you know, if you live in Texas or somewhere, and is it is does it take the same ruling as salam, meaning you don't initiate that to the non-Muslim? Wallahi, Allahu a'lam. Some scholars they said that. Some of them said no. These greetings, they don't mean anything. You know, they don't mean anything. For Allah, I don't have an actual re response to that. You know. But the salam, you don't initiate that. And of course, this was talking about Muslims who are dealing with non-Muslims or Arabs. You know, but we deal with people who is high or good morning or whatever. You know, does that apply to us also? No, Allah, Allah. It's an issue which has been bothering me for years yeah, and I cannot find the answer yeah. but if they get, say to you hi or good morning then you respond you respond as they say you know that is fine yeah. that is fine sorry I didn't, I didn't get the beginning You don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to. What if someone refuses to return your salam? You have done your job. Khalas. You give him salam. Whenever you meet him, you give him salam. 
for him to respond as his own partner. Yes, Akhi. La, sa la salam ala tu'am. It's not a hadith. It's just words people say. And some of them say, La kalam ala tu'am. Ala tu'am. There's no talking while eating. No. The ruling of talking while eating is the same ruling of talking while not eating. If it's good talk, talk. If it's bad talk, don't talk. Salam, same thing also. Salam, same thing also. Number 24. Number 24, which I was trying to remember. When you enter in a sitting like this, when people are seeking knowledge, people are discussing knowledge, don't give salam. When you enter in a masjid and people are sitting like this, and there's a lecture or a dars or a halaq, don't give salam to disrupt. You're disrupting. Go and pray your tahiyyatul masjid and sit. Those next to you, give them salam. The rest, you give them salam after the dars. I hope I'm clear on this. Because it happens every day or almost all the time. Number 25. Once you have sat, uh, we met, we sat, we prayed together. When you want to ask a question, don't start with salam alaikum, Sheikh. No. You gave me salam already, we're here together. You don't start with salam. Now, yes. You st we mentioned this. Part of the manners is you stay to the wordings which you came in the Prophet Sallallahu taught us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. The Prophet Sallallahu never said that. Why should we say it? Yeah. No. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You don't have to, to, to add ta'ala or anything. The ayahs for the Muslims. Yes, the Sunnah explains the Quran always. The Sunnah explains the Quran. Is the Shaitan still in the house? Probably he brought another group. Probably. Replying to the salam is a must. So whoever, does not reply, whoever does not reply commits sins, yes. Yes. Most of the scholars will say giving salam is not a must. It's not a must. But replying is a must. Is a must. It could be the same thing if you think of it like that, yeah. Yes, Sheikh Muhammad. <laughs> I don't know what that is, and it shows they're humble, yeah. You say assalamu alaikum to them, and they say this. <laughs> That's what he's asking, yeah. yeah. yeah that's what he's asking. I don't know what's wrong with some people, yeah. Is this okay though? Of course it's not okay. <laughs> if you can say, wa alaikum salam and this, alhamdulillah, you know, and also do that. But just replying with that, yeah. It's rude also. It's, it's also rude. You know, somebody gave you salam and you just do this. Or you just do this. This is rude. Yeah. Number 26. The handshake, you shake hands with one hand. You don't shake hands with two hands. Yeah. Some people love to do that. Yeah. 
and you give someone your hand, you shake their hand, yeah. You don't give them your fingers on. See, some, some brothers, they do that. Especially our Indian, Pakistani brothers. They like that, yeah. They just give people four hands, yeah. And, he, and this, they, it's like his hand just went through a surgery or something, yeah. <laughs> give me a hand, a handshake, yeah. You know, show me some love. Like I had a real brotherhood handshake. Don't take it wrongly, yeah. And I'm not stereotyping, but it's the truth. No, you don't give salam to sisters. You don't give salam to sisters. To avoid the fitan. Because the hearts are weak now. The hearts are weak. Somebody, when a sister gives you salam, he loses sleep. <laughs> he loses sleep. So you avoid that. But if they are older sisters, then alhamdulillah, you give them salam. Older sisters, you give them salam. Yes. Naam Habib. See now it's <laughs> Alaikum Salam. Yakfi Wahid. He's asking the salam you give in, in the in the salah. We said there's how many ways of doing it? Three ways. Number one, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This is number one. Number two, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Number three, Assalamu alaikum. Bas. That is also okay. All of them, the Prophet sallallahu did that. He says, if you're texting many times during the day, do we have to write salam every time or one time is enough? If you talked while texting, then the talk ended and it started sometime later, then you give salam again. You give salam again. Naam. Yes. You don't have to shake the hands. You don't have to shake the hand. The verbal salam is enough. But shaking the hand has a great excellence. The sins fall off. Now, and some brothers they like to give you hugs every time they meet you. Uh, hug, the hugs is for when someone comes back from travel. When you come back from travel, then you give a hug to someone. This is part of the sunnah. But not every time, every day you see each other, no. You shake the hands, that is enough. Now, yes Bilal. Yes, even if your uncles or aunts, or even let's say parents, they're non Muslims, you shake their hands, you kiss their hand. They're your relatives, you treat them with respect. You treat them with respect. They, can re they should reply. You know, they should reply. They should reply. No. Yes. If you can't tell, if you can't tell is this brother Muslim or not, and you don't give him salam, then there's nothing on you. There's nothing on you. How are you supposed to know, right? No. Your mother's aunts. You greet them with salam. Can you kiss the hand, you mean? Your mother's aunt, meaning she is the sister of your grandmother. Yes, she is your grandmother. Yes. Um, next was supposed to be adabul isti'idhan, the manners of seeking permission to enter. But I don't think we have enough time for that, so we will do it next week. Next week again, also, inshallah, we'll start after Maghrib. Because Maghrib will be 7 or 7 or 7 or 6, some, somewhere, or 7 o'clock maybe. So we'll start after Salat al Maghrib. After Salat al Maghrib next week, inshallah. Yeah, 
You don't say salam. You don't say salam. This is a major mistake. Ahsant for pointing that out. It's a major mistake. People say salam. What is salam? You say assalamu alaikum. You don't say salam. That is wrong. That is wrong. Don't reply. What do you say? Salam. Salam. Then what do you say? Is that salam for one person in the group or for everybody? It has to be like for everyone. Yes, if you give salam, a group of people are sitting, it's salam for all of them. For all of them. Right? And from the manners, if you greet the people who are sitting, a group, and you want to shake the hands, you start shaking the hand from the right side. You start with the right side, going to the left. That is from the manners. Naam. Anybody else has a question? Those who didn't ask first. Okay. Yes. You say Bismillah. I don't know about that one. Bismillah walajna, Bismillah kharajna. I don't know if it's authentic. I don't know if it's authentic. I know saying Bismillah is authentic. Salam was salam. Walladhi yusalli alaykum wa laikatu. As-salatu was salam. Ayyuh. Salam wa nafsu salam. Nafsu salam. When you're praying in the tahiyyah, in the tashahud, you say, As-salamu ala nabiyy Ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, he said, Kunna naqulu wa nabiyyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hayyun, As-salamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyy. He says, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to be alive, we used to say in the tashahud, As-salamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyy. Once he passed away, we say, As-salamu ala nabiyy. In third person, because he's not here anymore. Mm. So is it wrong for a Muslim to say to another Muslim, Hi, good morning, what's up? Is it wrong? If it's after Salam, there's nothing wrong with it. If it's after Salam, there's nothing wrong. But those things should not precede salam. They should not precede salam. Salam is a barakah. Subhanallah, it's a barakah. Blessings which you are leaving out. Yes. There's nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. What if someone ignores your salam? That is their problem. That is their problem. You give them salam. If they ignore it, they reply, that's their problem. You do your part. These other questions are not related to, to salam. It applies everywhere. Everywhere. But then again, it's not a must. You understand? It's not like it's a must. If you don't do it, you're, you're sinning. No. No. Is it for you or for other people? If someone enters the masjid and just says, Salaamu Alaikum. And you are praying. You continue praying. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gestured, he gestured with his hand like that. But if there's others and they reply, that's enough. We have to know if someone gives salam to a group, then not all of us have to reply. 
if there's three or four of us sitting and someone passed and gave salam, if two of us responded or three halas is enough, not all of us have to respond for the salam. But if he sneezed, it's a must for all of us to say. If he says Alhamdulillah, we say Alhamdulillah, that's a must. Now, anybody else has a question before we finish? What do we say? Assalamu alaikum. And alaikum, kum is the pronoun for, for plural, uh, plural in Arabic. Plural. Someone which is uh, uh, not someone, uh, a group, more than one. So it's, saying, it's like saying, may peace be on you, and in general, in plural, sorry. Even if he's asking, why do we say that even though it's one person? That's how it was said. And that's how it came. And some of the scholars said, because it's salam for him and the angels are with him. The angels which everybody has. Now, but it's also okay to say assalamu alayka for the male. If he's one, you say assalamu alayka, salam be on you. Or for the female, assalamu alayki. It's also okay. But assalamu alaykum, it sounds better. Mm. Naam. Last one. Naam. كيف تشك غير المسلم يسلم عليك السلام عليكم يوجد كثير ها في كندا هو يتكلم في كندا آه. You reply, Wa alaykum as salam. La ma fi dham alayk. Because mostly, it's the Muslim will say that to you. So you don't say, Are you Muslim or not? So I can give you Wa alaykum as salam. No, you say Wa alaykum as salam. Because mostly, Al hukum ala aghlabiyya. Ghaliban yakun Muslim. Hadu wal ghalib. Assalamu alaikum is for Muslims. The others they took it. The others they took it. Like in Assalamu alaikum asluhu lil muslimin. They say that when they see the Muslims, the Christians or whoever, the other Arabs are not Muslims. When they see the Muslims, they say Assalamu alaikum. Like in Baynahum, ma yakulun Assalamu alaikum. Sah wa laha. Baynahum, Nasara, ma yakulun Assalamu alaikum. They don't, between themselves, the Christian Arabs or the Jews, they don't say Assalamu alaikum. So they use that for the Muslims. Now, لا بد لا بد كمل. إذا كان نصراني فقول عليكم بس. If he's a Christian, he's just say عليكم. لكن إذا مسلم يسأل السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. You have to say عليكم السلام ورحمة الله. We'll continue next week, inshallah, after Maghrib again. Next week is after Maghrib. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadun la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka tu malika.